I guess he entered the scene. For some reason, this is, he's always just staring at you. Yeah, <laughs> keep jumping a bit. Uh, there's. Oh yeah, I think they flipped the wine. Yeah, yeah that's what bugged you. It's a country inhabited exclusively by birds. It's a picturesque modern place governed by a democratic parliament. It's bordered by two seas. It's a economy built mostly on air transport, commerce, and its aerial military. Countries on neutral terms with almost every other nation, except and except for the Great Meat War, had kept this standpoint all throughout known history. <sighs> the Clawville Chronicle is the most read and highly highest quality newspaper in the city. It's so infamous that it's being read beyond Clawville's borders and not just in the colonies. This was the paper that first published an article about two, the two heroic roosters, aka the chicken flutes. The article was written by Timothy Saltwater, the seagull journalist who has since become somewhat of a legend to himself. Is there any other pages on here? Maybe. Nope. Oh, okay. So also, we got a clue. Got old Fillmore must know something about Natasha. Could be important for the case, but he won't talk till he meet her. It must right. be really significant. And there's actually some people stuff. Oh, yeah, we didn't actually look at that yet. Natasha must know my wife Molly from somewhere. Or perhaps she has a very good informant. Must find out what the connection is. Yep. Okay. So there's at least some updates here. There you go. <laughs> Delmar Lowe, Falcon. An absolutely average, forgettable guy. And my also my equipment's from Avira. Avira. <laughs> Ah, Fillmore, the name he goes by nowadays, an old comrade from before the Clawville Times. One of the best private eyes in the city, and just like most of them, he gets into trouble with the law pretty often. And he's one of the very few people who can still be trusted in Clawville. There you go. Yep. I don't know if there was anybody else. Guess not. No, no, no. Right. So there's some whiskey over there. <laughs> That's where your eyes went. Look, uh, Sonny. I know it's not my drinking place. problems. <laughs> his father went to that guy when his, you know, problems uh, had gone too far. You're treading on thin ice, Marty. No, I just <laughs> look. Fellas at the station are talking, you know, all kinds of things. Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boil took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good. And let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty. It's gone. <laughs> After we talked about it, it's gone. Kid, and no horsing around. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, long face, give me a glass of tap water, too, okay? Yes, sir. Coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. <laughs> well, now we can ask the bartender. One more. Tell me, hey, Breath, have you seen Natasha tonight? Not yet, sir, but she's coming on soon. Well, can you tell me anything about Mr. Ibn Wessler? Sir, I... I don't want to. What about... let's see... five dollars, maybe? But, sir, you haven't even <laughs> paid for your drink. <laughs> what a voice <laughs> like an angel. Yeah, yeah, stop riding on the details, Big Nose. You do your job, and we'll do ours, okay? I mean, we're not here for work, of course. We're just here to relax. Oh yeah, exactly. Just a little fun. Of course, gentlemen. <laughs> she has pretty long legs. I mean, pretty and long legs for a squirrel, but I don't want to be prejudiced. Really? <laughs> We're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember? Yeah, I guess that is a squirrel. I see, I thought these were ears. Yeah, it's supposed to be the ear tufts. That's yeah. It's throwing off a little bit. Oh, big buck. So, where the hell is Natasha? Well, 
Let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Let's ask that stud. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. Man, your sense of humor is bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. What if, uh... ah, this is the life, huh? What's this guy do? Real estate? Mob accountant? Or is he a movie star? He looks like a coat hanger to me. Uh, that was actually worse than the previous joke. <laughs> I try. <laughs> well summarized. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's something else I can do with the big book. Oh, the fox is a wolf who sends flowers. What? Oh, nothing. I read it somewhere. Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. Ha ha ha. Very funny. Anything hey, else about that fox? Well, or that's good. Remember that old case with the okay. fox and the raven? How could I even forget? <sighs> Absurd, right? All that bloodshed for a piece of cheese. Yeah, hunger can bring out the monster in animals, right? And the wildest and most primordial instincts, no matter how civilized they seem. As you say, Monty. So you can just keep getting witty remarks. Mm-hmm. Yep. Those guys. Oh, there's some more important cow. <laughs> that <he> with... <laughs> well, I guess we'll start. This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. <laughs> That's it. Okay. All right. Isn't that? Yes, it is. The great Ibn Wessler in the flesh. So much for our incognito. You think he noticed us? Only if he's not entirely blind. Ah, uh, great. Who's the thing? <laughs> Woman with Ibn. I think I know her from somewhere. Maybe in your dreams, pal. Just act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. Oh, God. <laughs> what a pleasant surprise. The roaster coppers in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is... Uh... Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced <laughs> myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> we, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood-red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar <laughs> with this kind of thing. Yes, unfortunate, sir. Oh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> it's a nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter. But to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. Hamtaro? If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. <laughs> How can I help you? We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that, too. <laughs> Let's catch up on some things here. What? Do I get? Come oh. Daddy, darling. I just took the whole bottle. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing the bartender didn't look. Darling, it's a don't you think? There's someone who calls his gun collection his Harib. Touche. Shut it. Good birdie. <laughs> good birdie. 
So we certainly learned a few more things about Olivia, mostly. <laughs> Olivia Blackwig, crow. Unusually tall and slim for a crow. She's quiet and mysterious. Olivia is currently Aidman Wessler's assistant and escort. Finding out whether there's anything other than a working relationship between Miss Crow and Mr. Rat could prove by. I don't know if they have anything else on him except, you know, he's a rat. <laughs> and he's got a, a good photo now. Yep, he's a rat. He's Hobart, by the way. Oh, Hobart. Good looking, charismatic, and a cool looking gangster. One of the most well known gangsters of Clawville, real estate mogul, bank director, museum owner, distiller, smuggler, and information broker. I think I read that one already, yep. but that's okay. He's been acting quite strange recently as he's trying to withdraw from his own shady business to live a simple life with simple pleasures. Wouldn't be a problem in itself, but just isn't like him. Well, we gotta find out what's wrong. Nice bunker you got here. <laughs> well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. Listen, detective. If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city, so to speak. Only a bit worn out. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, detective, but the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? The name is just a name, of course, but the man behind the name is another matter, Mr. Featherland. You're a pragmatic rat. Thank you. <laughs> Look, detective, if you want to know something, just ask. All right, Yet. Mr. Wessler. <laughs> well, that wasn't very good. Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question, then. I've been in Mr. Wessler's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Oh, just uh, routine questioning, you know. Most of them aren't good for anything. Just <laughs> the time. Just exposition. It rude to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. <laughs> also, now you can actually interrogate him. Ah. Uh... Wessler is a tricky guy. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about him, so I have to be cunning. I can't just pin him against a wall yet. Okay, he's a tricky guy. Unfortunately, I don't know about him, so I have I have to be cunning. What he just said. Yep, so. and you're already starting kind of on the negative side with him. Yeah. Which I guess, to be fair, you are a detective in a place you don't want to be in. All right, so let's start with a basic question. How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. Uh, he's tricky, and now he, we know he's also mistrustful. You seem a very busy man. May I ask what you do, or why didn't you call the police? But he's not going to call the police. Uh, mistrustful here. Hmm. I don't know. We can't. I mean, I, I figure he wouldn't like the police, right? Probably not. He's a little mob boss. But this feels like it might be too intrusive. Eh. You seem a very busy man. May I ask what you do? Eh, it's uh, uninteresting. Would you elaborate? Eh. I 
take on a small share in the meat substitute business. If the new product works, eh, maybe we can make your job easier. You mean reduce predation in Clawville? There are such plans, uh... If you're interested, talk to Olivia, my assistant. She's an expert in what she does, uh, <laughs> Unlike me. So they use the word predation, mm -hmm. and they're the predatory police department. I guess that's a problem of animals killing <laughs> each other, is that what it is? That's what I'm gathering. Ah, because that's why the meat substitute will reduce predation. Uh, anyway. Thank you. That's it for now. Well, I actually have to go up, so I got the right one. Yeah, tricky, Mr. Holt. And secretive. So you're very taciturn, Mr. Wessler. Or how are, how are your alibis, Mr. Wessler? And is this place yours? The first one sounds kind of like a comment, a compliment, rather. Uh, this sounds like it would probably be too interrogative. Mm -hmm. And is this place yours? Uh... Maybe is this place here? <laughs> Give me a V. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, I mean. Is yeah. this place yours? No, it's not mine. Never been yours in the past? Yeah. Well, why do you ask questions you already know the answer to, huh? Yeah, it was mine. Now it belongs to Natasha. She's my girlfriend. What a coincidence. That was probably not good. Minus five. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I don't want to ask about the alibis. I don't think this one's. Oh. You're very taciturn, Mr. Wessler. Though I've heard you're quite the speaker. Look, I'll gladly talk to anyone about business, and even happy to talk about art. But uh, I'm no fan of interrogation on a night out. Are you even on duty? Sorry for any offense, Mr. Wessler. Let's talk about something else. Wessler is tougher than I thought, and he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. All right, well, I'm at minus 10, so I'm doing great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any similar incidents in Natasha's past? Don't you find these messages dangerous? Are you and Natasha close? You spend a lot of your time here. Well, we know he's tricky, Mr. Russell's secret, and quick-tempered. All right, your turn. I, I haven't been scoring very well. <laughs> One, two, three, or four. Let's see. I'm leaning towards three, maybe. Three or four. I'm in three. Are you and Natasha close? What do you mean exactly, chicken? Mr. Featherland, if you please. <laughs> this could be important. How does she stand on a scale from sweetheart to wife? Oh, you have some nerve. Ask her that. I'm a gentleman, Mr. Featherland. Really? Maybe you can't comprehend it, but I can't ask for her hand until she offers it to me herself. How chivalrous. Get to the point, detective. Ibn is quick-tempered, and I can use that to my advantage. I've confounded and softened him with my previous questions. Now it's time to be specific and ruthless. Oh, he's confounded. Uh, you want me to be ruthless now? Would you be willing to testify at the station? In some respects in the past, the mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How do you even meet? Well, I'm not going to any more relationship questions. I'm just going to go right for you. Would you be willing to testify at the station? You're joking, right? Maybe I can get you an invitation. Believe me, you'd love it. The coffee's good, but the chairs are kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, you have a peculiar sense of humor. It doesn't work. Yeah, I guess you're right. So 
So is she completely alone when she's there at the weekend? Tasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Hmm. So now yeah, she that. feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Hey, I know what you're getting at, but I'm a hundred percent sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you do, but uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm, illegal gambling nights. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy about the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. Yeah, right. So, can we meet your lady? Mm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Yeah! Not good, not bad. It's okay for a rookie. <laughs> Focus, Sonny. Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old time's sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> Please, take a seat. The show's gonna start soon. We don't have sitting frames. <laughs> there she is. given me such a unique compliment before uh, forgive me my name is santino featherland <laughs> i thought so you look more or less like i imagined more or less sometimes less is more mr featherland <clears throat> you were amazing dear as always could you be my little furball and fetch me a <laughs> cock but of course <sighs> God. Ibn will be back soon We'll have a few minutes to talk Then he'll end the conversation And throw you both out <laughs> With all due respect ma'am We're not that easy to get rid of Doesn't matter who's trying Believe me <sighs> Doesn't matter he'll do it That's why I'm telling you I don't want a scene <laughs> My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey. <laughs> I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Oh, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go. Before he comes back. 